Hello, this is Steve from SDR Play. Since the public preview release of SDR Connect, we've seen a lot of interest, particularly from people using the Raspberry Pi. So the purpose of this video is to show you some tips and tricks we have come up with that make it easier and more fun to use with the Raspberry Pi. I'm a totally unashamed point and click user. So having to use the terminal especially when starting the server function in SDR Connect, was a bit of a pain. So first up, I'm going to show you how to simplify that using the path command. Following on from that, for people using the Pi remotely, I'm going to show you how you can log in remotely using the secure shell to start and stop the server. And then finally, for us point and click guys, I'm going to show you how to update the applications menu to very conveniently start the server without typing anything in terminal. So first up, let's look at setting up the path command so that we don't need to keep typing in long path names to get to the files we want. I've just finished installing SDR Connect on a Raspberry Pi 400. I wonder how many of you have ever noticed the text appearing at the bottom of the window or if you have, like me, you just ignored it. Well today we're going to follow that advice and see what benefits it gives us. Once you've completed the installation of SDR Connect, it's straightforward enough to start the client. Just go up to the menu and select SDR Connect. A few seconds later the windows opens up and you can see uh, your local RSP in operation. However, it's not quite so straightforward if you want to use the server functionality. So I'll close down the client. To start the server, we have to open up a terminal window. And then we have to type in firstly a CD command, which takes us to the directory where SDR Connect is installed. As you can see, I type very slowly. And then once there, we type the command SDR Connect space dash dash server plus any optional switches we want, for example, to set up a particular port name, and then the server will open. There has to be a better way, and to do that, I'm going to follow what it said at the start of the, at the end of the install script, rather. So to do that, first up, we're going to open up the file manager. Should be at the top of your screen there. And since the file we're going to be editing is normally hidden, we want to go to the view menu, and select show hidden if it's not checked already. Now we need to navigate to our home directory and within the home directory look for the file .bashrc. Double click on the file to open it and then scroll down to the very bottom and add the following command export space path in uppercase equals slash opt slash SDR connect colon dollar sign path all uppercase and now file save and that's all there is to it now to be sure this takes effect for us at this point, it would probably help if we log out and log back in again. So I can log out, log out. And now I get a login prompt, put my password in and log in. And the job is done. Now to start the server, all we need to do is open up a terminal window no need for the CD command. We can simply type SDR connect space dash dash server and any other additional option switches you want and enter. And you can see there's the server running for us. Okay, so that last tip was mainly of use if you're sitting in front of the Pi itself wanting to uh, start the server. But what if you're away from home and want to connect to a Pi remotely and either you forgot to start the server before leaving or for some reason you just need to maybe stop and then restart the server. 
So this next section, I'll talk about ways that you can log into your Pine remotely and either start the server or stop the server and uh, have full control over the server functionality without having to sit in front of the Pi itself. To do this, we'll use SSH or Secure Shell. Click on Pi and then Preferences and then go down to Raspberry Pi Configuration. Select the third tab that appears at the top labeled Interfaces and if it's not already turned on, ensure the toggle labeled SSH is in the on position. That's it. SSH is now enabled on your Pi. OK, now we can move our attention to the remote computer. I've left a picture of uh, the Pi desktop on the screen so you can see what, if anything, is happening on the Pi. I'm using a Mac, so we get started up with this using Terminal. Other platforms, you can also uh, do, use PowerShell on Windows. Uh, you can also use a similar terminal command on Linux machines. So the first thing we want to do is issue the SSH command. And that takes the form of SSH and then type your username, in my case Steve, at and then the uh, computer name, which is raspberrypi.local on my local network at least, or you can use the uh, IP address of, on the local LAN for the Raspberry Pi. You will then be prompted to input your password, and of course this is the login password for the Pi, uh, as indeed was the username we just used in the step before. And now you will see a prompt, Steve at Raspberry Pi, and we can issue commands from there. Other ways to uh, format the command, as I mentioned previously, you can use the IP address of the uh, Raspberry Pi, which in my case is 10.0.0.120. Then just like before, you'll be prompted to uh, input the uh, password and you will end up with a Raspberry Pi prompt. If the Pi is not on your local network, then instead of the computer name, you will have to use either a dynamic hostname service you have set up or the WAN IP address of your local network. In addition to that, you will also need to set up port forwarding capability so that uh, the required port for SSH, which is port 22, is forwarded to the Pi. I covered uh, using port forwarding and uh, uh, host names in the uh, previous video on setting up a server on the Raspberry Pi. But for now, since my Pi is connected on my local LAN, I will log into it as I showed you before, and that brings us to a Raspberry Pi prompt. Once we have this prompt, then we can type in a command to start the server. Since I previously set up the path command, all I need to type in is SDR connect space dash dash server and any other options which is you uh, want to use on your server. I think the most commonly used option is to specify a port number. In this case I'm using 50,000 which is redundant because if you don't specify a port 50,000 will be chosen. But what's really interesting is the server output now appears in your secure shell window not on the Pi itself. And that means that Remotely, you can see both the settings for the server and, in addition, any connections that are made to the server. Now we can go ahead and start SDR Connect. If we then go to the menu and select Remote Devices Editor, we can set up our connection to the Pi. Click on Plus, give the server a name, and then put in whatever IP address or host name you're using, as mentioned previously. And then you can click on the Test Connection button. And you can see that we have a success. We can connect to the server, so we can change the, uh, save the changes, refresh the device list. And then in the device drop-down, we'll see two entries for the Pi, IQ and Audio. We'll use IQ because we're on my local network. If you're remotely connecting, you'll probably want to use audio, which requires less bandwidth. Now all you have to do, once you've selected the server, click on play, 
And sure enough, there are the signals that are coming from your remotely connected RSP. If for some reason you want to stop the server, you can simply press Ctrl C. But one caveat when using this approach is, if you close your SSH session, as I'm doing here, it will also close down the server. So now if we open up uh, SDR Connect again and we go to the uh, remote device editor, if we now select the Pi and then test the connection, you will see that we're unable to connect. So that's something to bear in mind. Uh, it's very useful to see all the server output, but you have to keep that SSH connected and open. Now there is a workaround for this, and I'll cover that in the next section of this video. So if we want to start the server remotely and leave the server running when we close our SSH session, we can slightly modify the command to start the server. If we type NOHUP at the beginning of the command, and then at the end of the command if we do a space and then an ampersand, it will start the server as before, but this time it will persist and keep running even if we close the SSH session. Unfortunately, when you use this approach, you no longer get the server output in your SSH window, so you're unable to see the server settings and the status of the server. But if you want to start the server and then just go away and do something else, this is a great way to go about it. As before, we can now open up SDR Connect and use the Remote Devices Editor to check that the server is indeed running using the Test Connection button. As you can see, all is well. Now I'm going to close down my SSH window and terminate my SSH connection to the Pi. The question is, is the server still running? So we open up SDR Connect, go to the Remote Devices Editor, Select the Pi and test the connection. And sure enough, the server's still running. Now you may be wondering how you can stop the server. Since there's no server output in the SSH window, because there isn't one, you can't press Control C. Alternatively, maybe the server's hung for whatever reason and you want to uh, stop it and restart it. I'll show you how to do that. Once again, we establish an SSH connection to the Pi. Once we've done that, we need to establish which process corresponds to the SDR Connect server, and then we will kill it. The way we do that first requires us to know the process number involved. To find that out, we can use the PS command. So logged into the Pi, we type ps space orcs space vertical separator space grep space minus i space sdr connect. The output from this command shows the process number on the first line. Note it is not the second number that appears lower down. So now we know what the process number is, we can issue the kill command. So we type in kill space minus nine space and then the process number, which in this case is 309295. And once again, we can open up SDR Connect and use the Remote Device Editor to see if we were successful. As you can see, the server is no longer running. Success! Well, that was quite an exercise, wasn't it? At this point, I'd like to remind you that you can use the up and down arrow keys on your keyboard to step back and forth through previous commands in the terminal window, so if you need to go back and correct something, you can get there. 
Um, but now let's uh, change the pace a little bit and let's talk about something we can do if we're operating the Pi directly and uh, let's do some point and click stuff for a change. As you know the usual way to start the server is to open up the terminal window and uh, either CD to the SDR connect directory or if you set up a path name as I showed earlier you can just type uh, SDR connect space dash dash server. But there's a fairly easy way to add it to the menu. So if you click on the Raspberry at the top of the screen, then go down and click on Preferences, and then uh, Main Menu Editor. Then on the left hand side, click where it says Other, and you'll see that SDR Connect is already there. It was put there by the installer. Click on a new item, then in the window that opens up, type in a name for your new menu item, like for example SDR Connect Server. Now next to Command, click on the Browse button. Chances are you'll see SDR Connect in the list. If so, you can just click on that and then OK. If for some reason it does not appear in the list, click on Other Locations, then Computer, then go down to Opt, then SDR Connect, and then within there you will see SDR Connect and click OK. Now we don't just want SDR Connect in the menu, we want the server. So click in the command box and use the right arrow key to space across all the way to the end. Once you get there, hit Space, and then type dash dash server. Once you've done that, go to the little check box below where it says launch in terminal and click on that to check it, then click OK and OK again. Now if you click on the Raspberry Pi at the top of the screen and go down to other, you will see there are two entries, SDR Connect which starts the client and SDR Connect server. Click on that and the terminal window opens and the server's already running for you. Piece of cake. Please note that if you want to use any of the server options, for example, to specify a port number, you need to add them to the end of the command in that menu editor. Okay, that's it for today. I hope you found some of the content in here useful. I would like to point out that if you're watching this video on YouTube, you can scroll down below the video into the description and there you will see a link to a PDF document that covers all this same material. So no need to keep pausing and trying to make notes. If you're watching the video at SDRplay.com, in the video window itself you'll see it says YouTube down in the lower right. You can click on that and that will take you over to YouTube. For the latest updates on SDR Connect, please visit our website at the link shown below, www.sdrplay.com slash sdrconnect. We look forward to bringing you more exciting features to this software in the coming months. 73.